Let's take a look at the Mission 6 training mission ILS landing in bad weather. You never know, especially if you're using realistic weather, when you're going to have to land at night, maybe in awful weather with very low visibility after a combat mission. And you're going to feel pretty good knowing that you prepared ahead of time getting that airport chart ready. So we start in flight approximately 10 nautical miles north of Mickey, at, which is an initial approach fix for the ILS landing at Tegu. It is daytime condition aircraft level at 15,000 feet. Actually, I think they meant to say 6,000 feet above sea level, which is where you start heading south, 180, speed 350 knots. Weather currently, we get a METAR style weather briefing here. The airport code RKTN, which is the airport code for Tegu. Information Bravo, uh, a date and a time Zulu for this information to be current. ILS, expect instrument landing system on runway 31. It doesn't specify left or right, but this gives us a hint we're going to be looking for runway uh, 31 left here. Transition level, as usual in South Korea, 14,000 feet, to which you transition the altimeter to local QNH for uh, Tegu, which the air traffic control gives you at the time. Uh, winds out of 240. Uh, 13 knots gusting to 17 knots, thunderstorms, rain, and overcast at uh, 1,000 feet here. Local QNH for Tegu, 29 or 04. So yeah, wind here, they give you the breakdown of this. Okay, so the elevation at Tegu, 353 feet. Tegu Takan channel is uh, 125 X-ray. It is already set up when you get in the jet. Tegu approach, you're already on that frequency when you get in the jet. You could also use preset number four. Uniform 4, Uniform 3, and Uniform 2 here. And ILS runway 31 left. Uh, 108.7 is the radio frequency that the instrument landing system needs to be tuned to. We need to have visibility at 200 AGL, okay, or 553 feet uh, MSL. We need to be visible uh, with some portion of the runway, the, the lights leading up to the runway. That's if we're using the ILS. We're not using the localizer or these other types of um, landing assistance. We're using the ILS, which has the most accuracy and gives us the lowest height by which we need to be visible of the runway, 200 feet AGL, uh, before we can actually land. If we can't see the runway, we're supposed to do a missed approach. The missed approach is to climb on the runway heading two miles, DME two, past the Tegu Takan, then climbing left turn to 6,000 feet, direct to the Tegu Takan, and then intercept radial 090 east, and fly that east, and you could do a hold out here where you fly on radial 090 to Mickey, the initial approach fix where you start at. Uh, do a left turn, all in autopilot, head back west, 270 for one minute, as is the, usually the standard at about 250 knots, and do a nice bank turn back here, and then you can intercept the DME arc before you get to 14 nautical miles, do a sharp turn and get on this arc again and come in for another approach and hope to be visible at the runway. So the approach starts just before you reach the initial approach fix, just on top of the cloud layer. Most importantly, we've got mountains, this mountain here to the left as we fly this descending DME arc here. Uh, we can see that the minimum sector altitude for 25 nautical miles in all directions around the Takan at Tegu is 5,900 feet MSL above sea level. So you can see we start just above that at 6,000 feet and we're gonna be descending down here. And if you look at the side profile of this DME arc, you'll see we're down uh, by the time we finish the arc, which is right here, okay? This is where this dashed line is where we're intercepting radio 115. We're already descending below the minimum sector altitude 5,900 feet, we're at 3,850. Uh, so if we are at DME 15 or 16, we may risk smacking into this mountain, which we don't have an altitude for here. So it's critical we're right at the 14 nautical mile distance on this arc. The approach will be made in two steps. The first will be to fly the arc DME until you cross radio 115, and then we will turn to intercept the instrument landing system on runway 31 left. So we will cross radial 090 as we head in this way. We'll arrive at Mickey. The initial approach fix at 6,000 feet MSL. We'll start a descending autopilot turn about five degrees nose down. Um, and we'll just use the heading bug one click at a time, moving the heading. Before we pass 090, we'll dial that up to 115, radial 115 off of the tech end. And as soon as we intersect this perpendicular, we'll immediately dial that radial to the localizer heading of 312 and then we're going to use the heading bug to make a sharp right turn 
and we'll cut this corner here. We can't do that sharp of a turn, but we'll cut this corner from 115 to at 14 miles to DME 12. We'll intercept the ILS a little while later, but at this point we need to be at 3,350 feet. We can level off DME 12. Here we can level off from our descent. We'll use autopilot, altitude hold, and we'll get to about what is it, 10, 10 and a half miles, at which point we'll start another descent from 3,350 feet uh, to DME 9, right over the river here, at which point we'll level off again for two and a half miles almost, DME 6.6, .6, at which point we'll be intercepting the glide slope and we'll ride that down from 1,870 feet at uh, DME 9 all the way to DME 6.6. .6. We'll ride that down, we'll start another autopilot descent, we'll use the heading bug to slightly adjust, and then when we get to the inner marker, we've got the outer marker here. That's an audible tone in the headset. When we get to the inner marker at uh, 2.6 miles, we should be only at 653 feet, 100 feet above the decision height here, where we must be visible some portion of the runway in order to make a landing. We'll transition outside at uh, the inner marker and look for visual cues for the runway. Right here at DME 2.6, you can see there's still some mountains on the right-hand side, some hills, some foothills. So in the jet here, getting master arm off, autopilot on altitude hold, and steering select referencing steer point six, which is the initial approach fix, Mickey. Steer point six is right over that, waiting for Tegu's Takan to come alive. I may be too far, or there may be some mountains between me and Tegu. There it is, came alive, zero nine or zero on the course knob. Getting the heading bug set up to use heading select. We're now in heading select. If you stay in steering select for too long, you go past your point six. Take it to our Goblin 21F16 Singleton, 16 miles east, 6,000 inbound for DME arc and ILS approach. You don't want to blow through steer point six on steering select or the plane will start flying in orbit. So we are on heading select. Good morning, Goblin 2-1. Hey, you approach. Continue in now. A straight in approach. Runway 3-1 left. Good Welcome back. There. Q in H-2-9-0-4. Inbound for DME arc and ILS approach. Runway 3-1 left. Goblin 2-1. Around 240, 250 knots. Angle of attack is oscillating between 4 and 6 degrees. That's okay. Reviewing the chart. My descent. Winding up at... 3,350 feet at DME 12 after I make the sharp turn at the end of the arc. Approaching Mickey. Still at about 6,000 feet MSL on altitude hold. Here comes 090 right over Mickey. Runway 310 left, Goblin 2-1. Now dialing in radial 115 from Tegu's tech end. Attitude hold, nosing down. Earlier I said I'd go five degrees nose down. Nose down, I need to do about two and a half or three degrees nose down actually. Three degrees might be appropriate for an arc, a DME 14 mile arc with an altitude loss of uh, 2,600, 2,700 feet. Of course, every arc is different. Just slowly walking the plane around, sitting at about 270 knots, 5,200 feet on the altimeter. I'm just scanning the instruments. Throttle's just above idle. I'm not great at using the ADI to judge uh, nose down degrees on the pitch ladder, so I keep looking up to check on the pitch ladder. So now I'm about perpendicular to course 115, but you see I'm out 15 miles as to do with the slant range. There's 14 miles. Remember, there's mountains just to my left or out, out here. 4,400 feet. I'm a little high because I can be as low as 3,850 here. I'm supposed to be about 3,850. A few hundred feet too high. As soon as I start this sharp right-hand turn, though, I start to lose altitude dramatically. You can watch, there goes 4,000 feet. 
can see it looks like I'm already picking up the instrument landing system signal on the ADI there. Walking the jet around this sharper corner here. Here comes 3750, 3600 I mean, 3500 feet. And you can see these sharp turns are just letting me drop like a stone. I need to stay above 3350 and I was about to drop below that there. I do not uh, need to do that until I think after DME 10 and a half miles. I'm still at DME 14 right now. So I'm holding about 3,500 feet. Still on attitude hold. Still coming around the corner. Those ILS needles are moving in nicely. Obviously, if you could just slowly twist that heading dial, things would be a bit quicker here. So there I am lined up with the ILS. You can see I go just left of course at first. I'm already a little bit left of course. I'm low. There's Goblin 2-1, contact tower for landing. Switch to 3 6 five, There's zero, DME zero. 11 miles now. And you can see I'm at 3,300 feet. So right about where I should be. Switching tower, Goblin 2 one. Altitude wise, 3,300 feet. Descending a bit now that I'm DME 10 miles. You can see ILS in the HUD is much easier to fly than the instruments down here. But you never know when you're going to lose your HUD in battle. 280, 290 knots. Need to slow down a little bit. 3 degrees nose down. It's a good angle of the glide slope here, but I'm above glide slope. Take it to our Goblin 21 F16, inbound 8 miles east on ILS, established ILS. You can see now I'm right, of course, slightly, and I stay right, of course, for a little while here, trying to correct left a little bit with the heading bug. The problem is it corrects left. Goblin 21, Kegu Tower, continue inbound 4, runway 31 left, report on final. Left very slowly. Continuing inbound 31 left, will report on final. Goblin there was the outer marker, 6.6 .6 miles. So I'm about to be on final, I need to put the gear down shortly, which will disengage autopilot automatically. And I'll have to fly the needles manually. Take it to our Goblin 2-1, 5 mile final, runway 250 knots, left. it's time to get on speed. You can see I actually hit the wrong button there, and they never cleared me to land until I realized my mistake at the last second. Getting the gear down, pulling back on the stick, still correcting left manually to come back on course. Below 200 knots, you can see my AOA is still at 7, needs to be more like 10 or 11 for my stabilized approach. Still slightly right of course, trying to bring it left, I can see the ground outside. 800 feet MSL right now, my decision height is 553. A lot happens in these last few seconds here, including a simulated HUD failure. 700 feet, there's the inner marker, should be about 2.6 miles to go. Remember, visibility is about one mile. There we are. I can see the runway lights. Decision height right there, 553 feet. I finally requested landing properly, but I was committed anyways. Goblin 21, Kegu Tower, wing 240 at 6 knots. Runway 31 left, cleared for landing. And the Check gear out. down. Clear to land on 31 left, Goblin 21, gear down, 3 green, and touchdown hot left side. The HUD is one of the first things to get uh, blown out of commission by flak from AAA or some issue like that. It's one of the more sensitive instruments that goes away when you sustain a little bit of damage. So uh, HUD outlandings are good practice. Take a tower, Goblin 2 1, clearing runway 3 1 left on Delta. Goblin 2 1, contact low, switch to 7580. Switching ground, Goblin 2 1. 